I want to tell you a story of this landscape job that I did that just went to all heck. It totally fell apart and how it was my fault. Um, I'm pulling my truck over right now. I'm actually going to get an ice cream for my wife and I and the dogs. And I'm like, dude, I got to share this with you. So this landscape job I made no money on. And why it was my fault this was this was a couple years ago but this one stuck in my head really bad i even tallied a list of everything that went wrong that week it was one thing after another after another after another after another and the, and the thing is it's all your fault so i took in a landscape job it's ripping out bushes replacing some bushes um taking out old mulch putting new mulch in weed bearer fabric planting some things doing some decorative stone some edging just a bunch of whole type of softscape stuff, plus pulling all the weeds and cleaning the property, trimming all the shrubs, like a whole property maintenance type thing. And the customer wanted window cleaning as well because we do window cleaning. Okay, so it was me and my main two guys. Now, the interesting thing about landscaping is you have to learn all these different skills. Like you got to be doing it for a long time before you can get good at it. Well, I was so used to being such a control freak that I was always the one that I made sure I installed all the edging because I was worried that they wouldn't be able to do it right. Well, it came to a point where I had to teach them and show them how to do it because I had to leave. We were so busy. I was out uh, ordering uh, materials and things like that and running all around. So, God, this job was a nightmare. I needed more help. We were swamped. The phone was ringing off the hook. I had to order materials. I couldn't do any of the physical work. So a guy who was working for me, he said he had a friend who was experienced in landscaping that could come work and wanted a job. So I hired him on the spot. I said, you know, show up in the morning. He showed up. So now I got three guys and me. So I walk them all around the property. I show them exactly what needs to be done down to the T. Well, just because you show somebody what to do verbally and you point and you're very descriptive doesn't at all mean that they even understand what the hell you're talking about. Unless you have like a bulleted point checklist and systems and everything, even then they might not understand unless they've gone through the actual physical process forwards and backwards many times and they understand and understand the order and sequence of events that needs to be done to make a landscaping job work. So... For instance, I verbally gave them all a specific different tasks and assignments to do while I left and got materials. And this is how you do it. You get one working, then you get another one working, you get another one working, you make sure you go back and check, and then you bounce. Well, I had one guy trimming all the shrubs, and I told him specifically, um, the mulch showed up, right? Don't, I'm just kind of skipping around here, but listen. Because I get frustrated when I even talk about this. And I shouldn't be. <sighs> Whatever you do on a job site. <sighs> the mulch is the icing on the cake. Don't you ever, ever, ever put down an inkling of mulch. A scoop of mulch. Until the whole property is completely all done. And everything is blown off and clean up. And all the shrubs are shaked off and blown off and clean up and done. And everything is blown down, every spectacle of dirt. Then you put the mulch, and then you clean up. Why? Because you don't want shrub trimmings to go on mulch, dirt to go on. You don't want mulch and shit mixing like salt and pepper with other materials or sediments. So I leave. The guy, one guy who's trimming all the shrubs, doesn't feel like doing that because he didn't understand why. So he trimmed all the shrubs real quick left shrub trimmings all over the top of the shrubs after I repeatedly told him to shake off the shrubs. Here's a guy who trims shrubs many, many, many times before. He knows this. Uh, but he didn't feel like it or didn't think he needed to, wasn't paying attention or had something else on his mind. So what do I do? I get back and he's putting all the brand new mulch in the beds way too thick and heavy and not spreading it properly so there's enough for the backyard I get there he's piled all the mulch up around the plants after I told him only two inches thick but he was trying to get rid of the mulch oh my god I'm so glad I fired this one guy this guy and now there's mulch this thick in the front garden beds with shrub trimmings all over it and the other guy's blowing we're not even anywhere near done this job and he's blowing dirt all over the mulch into the beds I'm like, what the fuck is going on? 
And the, you know what he says to me? He goes, we ran out of mulch. We need more mulch. You got to order more mulch. Like the ferry is just going to drop off more mulch. I said, what are you doing, bro? You just got trimmings all over that mulch. I told you, take all that mulch out of that bed right now. Sift through the good stuff. Get rid of the bad stuff. What do you mean? I just put it all down. Well, I told you, you know, so what I'm saying here, right? So what do I say? Then the shrubs weren't trimmed properly. I ended up trimming them myself. But before I did it, I go over to the side where I had two the two guys installing the black diamond edging. They dug out the garden bed. They fixed everything. They put the nice edge, black diamond edging for, you know, fresh mulch, perfectly straight. And I told them, I took out a mason line. I said, here's a mason line. Make it perfectly straight. This is how you do it. You dig it out like this. You put all the, the stakes in. Then you backfill it. Then you tamp it down. It's got to be this much off the, the grass. This much dip. Straight up and down. 90 degree angle. I showed them how to do it specifically. I come back. The black diamond edging looks like an S. Like this. It looks like total crap. And they're just finishing up. And they were doing it over an hour while I was while I was out getting materials. I was like, it's wrong, it's wrong, look how curvy it is. They're like, yeah, it's curved a little, but it's fine. I'm like, no, it's not fine. Rip that shit up and redo it. What do you mean, we just finished doing it? That's what they said to me. I was like, I don't care if you just finished doing it. Rip it up and do it, it's not straight like, I did you use the mason line? No, we just figured we could do it without it. Oh, you figured you could do it without it. Okay, okay, okay. So we rip it all up. Now the dirt's all messed up, right? So I, I, I tell them to put all the dirt in, pack it all down, tamp it, regrade it, and redig with a straight, perfect line straight up and down. So I go on the other side now to see what the one guy is doing. And I send him, I actually send him to do something else that's, that's easier. The guy who's messing up the mulch and the shrubs. I retrim all the shrubs myself. I'm trying to fix and clean up this mess while my phone is ringing. And then all of a sudden I notice, where's the backpack blower? Where's the backpack blower? I'm running around now looking for the backpack blower. I can't find the backpack blower anywhere. It's gone. One of the guys used the backpack blower when I was gone and left it sitting at the edge of the apron of the driveway by the curb just wide out in the open and they all went in the backyard or something one was they were almost on the side one was in the back i don't know what they're doing somebody came by and ripped off the backpack blower it was stolen 100 percent for sure it was a brand new 500 dollars backpack blower but now my backpack blower stolen i'm like what the fuck so i'm like dude i have to leave now and immediately go buy another backpack blower now my profit's gone from this job i don't know how much it was dude a few grand three grand i don't know i don't remember so I leave to go get another backpack blower, and I'm gone another hour. Now by this time, it's it's coming on like 5 o'clock, and they're calling me, hey, we want to go home. I'm like, I'll be there in a few minutes. I come back with a brand new backpack blower, and I go to the side, and the guys are just finishing up reinstalling the edging that I told them, and it's an S again. It's messed up again, and this time, it looks a little bit better, but now it's installed totally on an angle, and it's falling over, and it's like and it's flopping around, I'm like, that's not at all how I showed it. And I, now I'm having like a panic attack, right? So what did I do? I literally sent, I said, just start cleaning up the job site. Do whatever you got you got to do to start cleaning up. We got to get the hell out of here because now rain is coming in. I was already supposed to be off of this job site. Like that day we were supposed to be done with the whole job. Done. And we were only 50% done, plus the windows needed to be clean, plus we had to be in another job site that was the next day that was immovable because we had jobs booked up for three weeks. You know what this is like. And now I'm scrambling trying to call customers back to let them to call customers to push jobs back because I didn't have a secretary at that time. What did I do? I got down. I ripped out that edging myself, went bam, 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 bam. I took, I took a shovel, I kicked out all the edging with my feet, I had bruises all over my feet, dude, and just went, boom, perfect straight line, popped the edging in, 
took my uh, my my uh, my my mini sledgehammer and I banged all the stakes down, packed it all in. I'm dude, I'm not even bullshitting you. 10, 12 minutes, the whole side of the edging was in. I did it myself. Perfect. It was literally perfect. I packed and tamped down the garden bed, prepped the garden bed, done. 15 fucking minutes. What, what took them two fucking hours doing it wrong, but it's my fault because I literally didn't sit there. I wanted to sit there. I'm, I was like, you know, studying and researching and learning how you have to, you know, you sit there, you teach them how to do it. Then you have them do it. Then when you're done, you have them show you how they did it, how they're doing it. Now they're teaching you. It's installing accountability and locking it into the nervous system and the subconscious mind. Because when you teach, you learn. And then have them show someone else, the other guy, how to do it, right? And now they're teaching and there's an accountability pattern, right? And now they feel confident and then they can do it. So that's how you show people. That was my plan, right? But the phone's ringing off the hook. I have to go get materials. I got to go do all these things. It's fucking helter skelter. So I go in the backyard where the other guy's cleaning up and um, I don't know what he was doing, but he was rushing and he was moving dirt. So he just piled it all in some like random garden bed and like buried some tree or something and did something completely ass backwards and asinine that was horrible. And I was like, what are you doing? You got to move that stuff. The rain is coming. He's like, but I just did it. I'm like, no, this is all my fault. Right? And the customer is like looking out the window. No, they weren't looking out the window. I'm exaggerating. Oh, God. So like, and it hit me in that moment that the new guy that I hired, I literally just, he did nothing the entire day but do stupid shit that I paid for that I had to go over and fix or send them back over what you did wrong anyways then i come in the front yard and the guys got the the other guys got the brand new backpack blower and he's blowing fucking dirt all over the place and and literally instead of like sweeping like the main part of dirt into a pile he's just blowing dirt all over the fucking brand new mulch and i go stop 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 what are you doing now it's starting to rain he's like what i'm cleaning like you said I'm like, you're fucking blowing dirt all over the brand new mulch. Grab tarps and put it over the mulch with bricks so it's safe so it doesn't get rained on. And every single, like I've been on so many jobs with guys who are actually experienced in landscaping. Who are actually experienced. And like when I'm not looking, when, I, when I'm not looking, like, okay, if your ass is on the line or you got money on the line or you have to be accountable... I've seen guys be really, really, really smart and just do amazing work. And the same exact guy when he doesn't give a shit or he's just trying to get off work or he doesn't care because his ass isn't on the line, do the shittiest work ever and not care and literally just cost me money. So same guy, two different, like, I've, ha I've had guys work for me that literally just piss away money and time if I, I don't know I don't know so when it comes to employees oh, it's not has nothing to do with employees it's all me it's my fault my fault my fault my fault and the, and the problem is now okay there's also been to be fair there's been times in my business where I've had six guys working on a job site and that shit was working like a like a Swiss Army watch, dude. Perfect. Everybody knew their role and everybody was working. And it was like a swarm of bees or whatever you want to... Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the only difference when all that was happening, right, is I was in control. You hear my tone of voice right now? I was calm and assured. And I spoke with clarity. I wasn't rushing and scrambling. Those were also the jobs where I was getting the money that I wanted. I was getting good money where I knew there was no chance for mess up or would be catastrophic to my business. Those were the jobs where I was the most alpha male, right? Uh, the interesting thing, oh, though, um, and I think this is all a, it's an evolution of, a, the, of an entrepreneur. To be an alpha male like that, for me, takes a lot of energy. I'm completely exhausted after work and after big landscape jobs where I'm just like, oh, 
like being like a drill sergeant who's very firm about everything that you say, I think it actually evolves to a point where you're just calm and relaxed and you just speak the truth. Like you can just discern bullshit. You provide them with the tools they need, the blueprint that they need, the materials that they need. They know what to do and they know to be co-leaders. And another thing is I was running around in a reactive state. I don't know. I think it's important to go through all that. This was actually several years ago, and I'm glad I just vented all that out. Uh, at the end of that job, I actually, I think I, uh, I broke even, or I made like $90 or something, off of like 30, 3500 and it, it just took me like four days. So actually the opportunity cost because I was supposed to be on other jobs and I had to go back on a Sunday to clean the windows by myself. Um, I lost money, for sure I lost money. And I fired uh, the one guy eventually and the other guy got rid of immediately. Uh, and I shrunk back down, you know. I went up to, I had four trucks at once, but I had two, two trucks out and then me out quoting jobs and you know, getting materials and stuff like that. And then I shrunk back down to one truck. And if we're really busy, we go up to two trucks. And it's only because that helter skelter factor, the level of chaos grows and it's just, you're just pulling your hair out. And then you get off work and you get home and now like you gotta get home and do paperwork immediately. Dude, you have fires going on. Like literally your business could melt down and you could end up losing everything. If you don't get home and get immediately on the phone call and the paperwork and immediately start sorting out the shit and finding out and, and, and fixing and putting out the fires, but you get home and now your your wife and your family wants to spend time with you. Oh, there you are. And you're like, I love you, I love you, but I gotta, what do you mean you don't wanna spend time? What do you mean? What do you mean everything's not gravy? You should be able to get everything done in four hours a day. Four hours a week. And it's like, well, eventually I'll be that dude. But right now I'm not that dude. Right now I'm going through hard learning mistakes and lessons. And I think that your family should be there for you and have your back and say, hey, I know you can't spend time with me right now. It's because you're still learning all these things. What do you mean? You've been in business for three years. You should already be an expert where you're only working five hours a day. <laughs> and it's like there's so many challenges, struggles that you got to go to and went through when you have a small business. Everybody is on your ass all the time, it feels like. And no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, it's never fucking good enough, dude. And especially when now you got your family breathing down your neck because you're not spending time with certain people, you're not doing all these things. And it's like, it's so fucking easy to look at somebody else in their situation and tell them, you're not doing this enough. How come you don't have a nice house and brand new trucks already and all this equipment? How come you're not doing this? How come you don't have hot kids? How come you're not making more money? More money. How come you're not into How come? I don't know. How come? How come? Like, people don't know what you're going through. And I'm not saying having a job is easy, but having a job is hard. But when you punch out of the job, a lot of times you punch off. So with people who are nine to fivers are like, why don't you just get a job? Why would you go through all this? It's because you're fighting for your freedom. And the, and the invaluable lessons that you go through having a small business, um, they're just worth it, dude. Because they just teach you just how to be like, how to control your emotions, how to learn from your mistakes lesson is repeated until lesson is learned god i've made a lot of mistakes let me know in the comments below if you made a lot of mistakes in your business if you've had to eat things if you've had to work for free okay i gotta go i gotta get this ice cream up well wait my wife's probably like where the hell is he every time i just run up to the store or anything i'm gone for like half hour 45 minutes she's like where were you where were you and then how are you supposed to tell your wife? Oh, I pulled over in the parking lot randomly and I made a video. I decided to make a video. You're fucking crazy. No, no. You're fucking crazy. You say you're going to go get ice cream and you just randomly fucking pull over and fucking make a video? That's... <laughs> yes, motherfucker. Yes. 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 I randomly pulls over and makes videos, dog. Ah. <sighs> Peace.